the best ISO. Rack it up, rack it up, I got a bit of the bank to make me a safe house. Shake it up, shake it up, she got her hands on her knees and she bringing the cake out. Smoke it up, smoke it up, I got some gas, some packs, I'm up in the greenhouse. Ball it up, ball it up, I'm with the gang, we taking shots off the rebound. Good afternoon and welcome to Walking Out of Lockdown. Today is a very special edition for me. I have the honor of speaking again with Patricia Bitar Cherfan, who is the founder and editor of Home Magazine. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's Lebanon's premier English magazine. And that is amazing in itself. But Patricia does so much more than that. She is a social entrepreneur. She's engaged in peace building, cultural dis diplomacy, women's leadership. Um, but also she is a very involved mother. Um, she is very involved in um, spiritual from the aspect of holism, from the aspect of interfaith. I mean, I could go on forever and I will provide a lot of links in the bio because I think it's very much worth going uh, through a lot of what you've been involved with, Patricia. And it's especially nice for me because I rarely get the chance to interview people that I met being interviewed by them. So this is a nice switch because the first time I met you, you were interviewing me. Exactly. <laughs> Um, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for this beautiful introduction. And I'm really humbled and uh, I hope I'm, uh, I deserve all of this. Uh, and it has been a while. Uh, I didn't see you. I saw you last time in Lebanon and uh, we had uh, big dreams to do so many things. And uh, I don't know, uh, we've been having problems in the country and now the whole world. <laughs> So, uh, but we're always hopeful. It's true. It's true. I had obviously met you um, shortly after Finding My Lebanon came out, and it was my intention and still is to be in Lebanon uh, for at least half of, half of my year. Unfortunately, um, I guess because I follow culture and I follow the problems uh, that a lot of artisans... Um, and people on the ground face, it's my role in life to go to each of these and to spend time. As you may know, we were supposed to be in Peru working with the indigenous people before the lockdown. But I am very pleased that Lebanon has you because it's more important that, that you're there than I'm there, quite frankly. But let's get started a bit. Now, I always start with asking about the beginning of the year because most people's expectations for the beginning of the year were actually quite good. But Lebanon was in a different position at the beginning of the year. So why don't you give me a bit of background, both for you personally and for the country as a whole, what was going on for those listeners that just don't know the whole details? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we were not doing well lately. Uh, it has been dragging for a long time, but uh, the last few years, it was really bad. Uh, many companies closed down in 2018 and 2019. We had around 5,500 companies closing down. And uh, yeah, with a very small economy, if you can imagine, this is very, very taxing. Uh, we don't even have official numbers in 2020 because now... I mean, I cannot describe the situation. Uh, the revolution here in Lebanon started in October 17. Uh, we had uh, a lot of corruption. And, um, you know, people cannot be silenced, I believe. So at some point, things like this, they burst, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and now we even have now the, the banking sector. We have... Uh, the capital control uh, that's locking uh, almost all the money of the Lebanese, and they were attracting many, a lot of money from Lebanese abroad and a Lebanese diaspora in general. So Lebanon and Lebanese were in a bad situation to start with this year, and yeah. then <laughs> the the COVID nineteen uh, like made the last. Uh, <laughs> you know, hit. Okay, so then we jump ahead to March. COVID is spreading everywhere. 
Um, when did lockdown begin and what was the general reaction? What were the Lebanese? I mean, obviously they were already in a bad situation. Um, what was the general reaction? Uh, luckily, uh, we handled well all the lockdown. Uh, we were the one of the first countries that really closed down. Uh, the, the schools, they stopped also in March. Uh, we had official lockdown, the airport closed, closed down, etc. So uh, my daughter is studying in the States and uh, she came back uh, March 14th. <clears throat> I, when I asked her to come back home, she was she was shocked. Like, why why are they asking me to come back home? The university was still on and running, and uh, they were still out, and uh, they they didn't even understand the severity of what's happening. Mm. So, uh, but luckily she came. She came back, uh, and after a few days, the the airport uh, was you know stopped, and also in the states and. After then, it was very complicated to, to, to bring all the students back home, you know, with all the, the risks also that uh, of uh, contamination, etc. So uh, I'm very blessed in, uh, in this perspective. You know? Yes, I understand what you mean entirely. My daughter was in Venice working at the Guggenheim when COVID uh, hit Italy. And they don't they don't understand, and this is something I want to get into, that for a lot of the young people, they have heard from us, they've heard from others, that every once in a while the world just flips. It's not something, it just entirely flips. It's different than anything you've ever expected. And my daughter didn't want to leave until I literally had to order her out of Venice. And sure enough, the day she got out, they closed the airports at 9 o'clock that night. Um how has it been for your family for um, lockdown and also just the disruption in what you're doing, but also the time together, you know, good and bad? Yeah. Uh, we were in our, in the village house mm -hmm. in Bishmazin Kura. And uh, this was very nice because we were close to nature. We had the garden, we had, the, you know, the fresh air. Uh, and it was strange, but I enjoyed it. I understand. I understand. Believe me. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe that uh, COVID-19 and all what happened uh, was actually a blessing. Mm -hmm. Um, I know, I mean, many people unfortunately lost their lives and uh, people lost their, their family members or friends, etc. But uh, we were going somewhere as humanity, um, very strange, you know, mm -hmm. we were running. I don't know why and where <laughs> and to do what. And... Uh, and I think this stop is made us all uh, go um, be in the being rather than in the doing. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. I mean, we had very nice family time. Uh, you know, I have two daughters. Uh, I enjoyed them so much and my husband. And uh, they did great working online and studying online, et cetera. And we had so much time to spend together. Uh, usually, you know, uh, my daughter is 19 now. And, you know, they go out. They prefer to be with their friends, etc. So we were together, but they didn't have other options, you know. So, so it was a night as a parent. <laughs> I, I'm sorry I'm saying this, but no, I enjoyed I it. No, I agree. I completely agree. I'm sorry. I... Personally, now that we're opening up, I'm I'm sorry to say I'm missing a bit of lockdown. Yeah. And I think I will I will claim a lockdown day all my life. I mean, it, it did so much good to 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 me and to my family. I don't know if they would like to do this as well, but 
Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I would prefer to live like this, having one or two days per week, just, you know, doing my own stuff, you know, and uh, it was it was beautiful. I, I continued working uh, remotely and uh, actually we did great doing this because we continued uh, and we were even productive and we cut down the time that's usually is spent on the road, uh, roads with the traffic and, uh, you know, it was productive, and um, I spent also also three three months studying, and I enjoyed this so much. What were you studying? Yeah. I'm curious, uh, or in general. I did uh, digital strategy. Ah. So, yeah. So for all this transformation period, you know, I mean, everything is going is digital and uh, the digital is disrupting everywhere in the world, every business, every life. So I felt it's really timely to do this. And I studied and, uh, you know, when I enrolled, I thought it's gonna be something like, you know, I would dedicate a few hours a week for it. But uh, finally, you know, <laughs> it took me much more than this. I had to do tests, I have to do, uh, serious work and reading and studying and whatever, but I cannot describe it how much I enjoyed it. It was, it was really beautiful. You're a person that strikes me from having spoken with you and looking at what you do and even your magazine, uh, you know, as you know, I think your magazine is genius. I've told you so many times, a high glossity magazine targeted at the uh, overseas Lebanese, but also the well-off Lebanese that have, as we all know, they like luxury, they like gloss, they like all this. And then you start reading the magazine and it's like, wait, this is actually opening people's minds. This is actually talking about the issues that are very important in a place that otherwise they would never hear. They would never see it. They wouldn't understand it. And so, you know, it appears to me, and this is a question, that learning and continuing to grow is very important to you throughout your life. Do you, is that a chore that you go through once in a while when you realize you need it, or is that actually an aspect of the way you choose to live life? Uh, I'm a very curious person by nature, uh, culturally curious. You know, I have a certain curiosity that I'm always searching to know more about so many things. And as you know, as much as you learn, you, you, then you realize that you know so much, so little. So it's, <laughs> and, um, and like so, there are so many things that fascinate me in life, so many. And um, having a home magazine as a platform, it gives me this, this opportunity to be diverse because I love diversity. I love to, uh, uh, to celebrate diversity. We are a very diverse country and uh, we have something I think very unique, which is our resilience. Uh, if we could bottle our resilience and spread it to the world and we monetize this, for example, we would be one of the richest uh, nations, I think, because we've been through a lot and we're still there. And we still have so much talent in every single field. And being also a, an editor in chief, it allows me to enter people's minds so quickly, you know, because when you're interviewing somebody, usually to know a person in a regular life, it takes so many meetings and uh, social meetings and then uh, connecting, et cetera. And it, it's, it's a long road. but when you are with somebody interviewing him or her, uh, they really uh, invite you to their real self. They really invite you to their, uh, and I, I make it a point to ask the, the really the questions, uh, the tricky questions, like how they got where they are now. Uh, I, I wanna hear the pain of people. I don't want to just uh, see the, the the, the flashy side of success, you know? 
I want to see the struggle. Uh, I want to give in in the editorial line, um, like role models, and tell the youth that uh, it's it's difficult. I mean, don't think it's easy. I mean, nothing nothing easy is really worth it. I think so. Uh, so giving them examples of of people from around the world that uh, made it very big, uh, especially in terms of impact. I, I love the impact of people when they really make it big mm -hmm. because um, mm -hmm. um, you know you have so many criterias of success but when you make it big and you give back uh, then you are a very mature i believe human being in terms of wisdom in terms of what you want to achieve in life because the more we are aware that we're here for a short while i think the more wisdom one would have yeah, it's nice to enjoy life, but also what to leave behind is very, very important. What do you say to the younger generations in Lebanon right now? One of the things we're noticing worldwide is that millennials and uh, the generation afterwards actually, maybe because of social networking, maybe because of the internet, nobody's quite sure the sociological or psychological reason, they actually have very little curiosity. They find an answer and that's it. It's almost like if you find it on Wikipedia, you know everything. How can you, how can you continue this idea of curiosity and the fact that anything worth doing takes effort and otherwise it's just not worth doing it's going to be hard it's going to be difficult but it's going to be worthwhile how does or how are you looking at getting home's message also to those younger generations it's true it's hard it's harder for them because uh, they are having this all this information so easily so they don't even need to do the effort but i think um, life um, have, has many lessons uh, also, also always hidden for people. Mm -hmm. So, so if if we don't teach them this, uh, a disease would. Uh, any deception, love deception, career deception, whatever. I think all of these things are es very essential to really forge a. A really a good character. I don't think if one had an easy life all his life would have so much to share with the world, you know? It's nice, the struggle. The struggle builds you, builds men, but even more builds women because it's always harder also for women. So I think it's uh, it's a big lesson that we can have from real life, but also from, as I said, the the role models we always always uh, present in in home magazine. And uh, uh, and when you go in depth with the people, the millennials or others, I believe in in the goodness of humanity. If you really scratch people in the right direction, I think you always find, Nice stuff. Um, uh, two questions. First one following on that. Uh, there was a comment by a philosopher that says, uh, comfort isolates us from our humanity. It's only strife that puts us in touch with that. Based on what you said, how do you respond to that? I, I was listening to a podcast um, now during this lockdown, and it brought something very interesting to uh, to me that it was an eye opener. I had never really uh, thought about it this way. I'm a person who, who, who likes to achieve, to put set a goal and uh, go really work hard for it. And I, I like challenges. This is a character. I mean, this is how I am. Um, Question in, in, in this podcast was, uh, what would be your trait of character if you are not talking about your achievements? Mm -hmm. So 
as a character, who are you without your achievement? And I thought like, wow, <laughs> this is such a new thing for me, you know? <laughs> it's like your character without what you do. Your character just who you are, you know? And, and then it's, it's a completely new perspective of, you know, it's, it's how gentle you are, how generous you are, how content with yourself. How, I mean, there are so many other questions that are far from who you are in terms of what you do, you know? And um, yeah, and it, I had so much time to reflect you know, on, on yeah. words like this. Uh, and the last question I want to ask you is, what are your fears coming out of this? Is there anything that, that you fear going forward, either as a result of COVID or just some of the things we've talking about, talked about with the problems of humanity and civilization or globalization before? I, I don't feel fearful. I mean, it's not a feeling I... I deal a lot with, you know, I'm a very positive person. I'm always uh, very hopeful. And uh, maybe my fear would be that we, we don't learn from this experience because it would be really a pity. Um, my fear is technology. I want it to be stopped not stopped, but like used for good reasons. Uh, because you always have conspiracy theories and you never know what's right and what's wrong in this. Um, I, I believe that we have a big role to play. The people that would like to uh, be impactful in their life. I think it's not an option. It's not an option for people not to, not to go there, not to go the extra mile. Um, and I feel also there is a very big role for women because uh, we're half of the planet and in this part of the world as well. And uh, we have many resourceful women. We have many resourceful women. And it will be a pity not to, not to use these resources economically, uh, socially, uh, even in households. I mean, uh, you know, when you have a partner, the life is, is nicer. Is, I mean, you have somebody to talk to, you have somebody uh, to, to brainstorm with, you know. Uh, I think the woman somewhere where um, she's like secondary or whatever, I don't think it's... it's um, it's a smart move on a national level. You know, it's, it's something that uh, we don't want to use all, and we don't want to lose all these resources. We have so much to give and we have a duty to give. And uh, it's a choice, of course. I mean, a woman can, I don't, I'm not judgmental. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, uh, they can live the, the way they choose to live, you know. But uh, it would be a pity, you know, it would be a pity not to be there, not to participate in the economy, in politics, in, um, in everything good for society, for, for the world, you know. And we are nurturer by nature. So uh, by nature, is, it's, our, it's our nature to take care of other people, of our homes, of our kids, of our husbands, etc. For us, it comes natural. So I hope this resource will be, uh, will be used. And we always have a gender lens with the home magazine. So we give the floor for as many women as, as men. Uh, and you will be surprised. They're doing, they're doing great, great things, uh, changing the world, and um, and they have a they have a big role in Lebanon and globally. And I think they proved it. Uh, many countries now uh, they have uh, their prime ministers or presidents or whatever, and they're doing even better. You know? mm -hmm. 
Patricia, you are amazing as always, and you are without doubt something. I mean, I'm sorry to get emotional, but I have not had much contact with Lebanon in the last 18 months because of other work I've been doing. And just talking to you and reminding me of everything I love about it, you've made me feel much better today after a morning that was quite difficult. So I got to thank you very much for this. Thank you. Call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and thank you for this opportunity and uh, hope to see you in Lebanon soon. As soon as I can, believe me, believe me. It's something that is in my heart, is in my mind. We'll, we'll see what comes next. I know you're busy, so I'm not going to detain you anymore, but thank you so much. And I would just like, I would just like to ask the people that are listening or uh, viewing this on YouTube to follow our channels, Home Magazine Lebanon. Rag it up, rag it up, I got a bit of the bank to make me a safe house Shake it up, shake it up, she got her hands on her knees and she bringing the cake out Smoke it up, smoke it up, I got some gas, some packs, I'm up in the greenhouse Ball it up, ball it up, I'm with the gang, we taking shots off the rebound